Hello, dear beloveds. Well, we are gathering together this afternoon to have a conversation with the chakras. And I'm very excited to do this. A big part of why I want to share it with you is, um, sorry, my earrings coming out there, is because I want to give you more insight to uh, understand the tools of the intuitive guide and the ways that we train um, our intuition muscle and the ways that we learn to communicate uh, with the subtle anatomy. And we use the chakras as those entry points into the subtle anatomy to have that beautiful communion uh, with with the um, invisible part of us, but the part of us that is actually more uh, in, in control of or, or that part of us that is determining our reality more than our physical being. So our subtle anatomy should be cared for and revered and, and you know, treated with great care and respect, um, even as much as or more so than the physical body. But we tend to not think about it at all. Um, or if we haven't been taught about it, then we, we neglect it and we can even abuse it. So understanding chakras is, is really about going beyond any kind of philosophy or any ideas it's truly about you becoming deeply connected to the truth of what you are which is infinite and unlimited and your subtle anatomy being the truest and most important part of you because it's the part of you that is determining how the physical shows up anyway so if we were to care for our subtle anatomy we would find our physical health would come into balance very very quickly and easily so today I wanted to show you how we as intuitive guides commune with the chakras. Now, the chakras are not new. Um, they are very well understood by many people who are on this path. And the, the ideas of, of the, the subtle anatomy or that the, the chakras as part of the aura or the energy body or the energy field, however you've been taught to think about it, is, is a way for us to begin to break our addiction to thinking through 3D reality in the dominant senses and to train ourselves to start thinking and responding, sorry, my hair's really annoying me today, um, through the, you know, to, to, to think through energy and frequency and vibration rather than to focus on the ideas of the dominant physical material plane, which are actually the illusory aspects of us or, you know, the parts of us that are most dense and least interesting and also the parts of us that are hardest to change. So if we want to see change in our reality and change in our physical health and change in anything in our lives. We need to start with that subtle realm, with our subtle bodies and to work with the energy of what we are not with the matter of what we are and that's what we're going to spend some time doing together today so thank you for those of you who I can see who've joined me live and I've got a little list of those of you who've nominated yourselves earlier today and if I have more time I'll call for more volunteers the point of this work again as I always say is not to show off my skill or abilities as someone who can tune into the subtle anatomy of myself and other people but to demonstrate in fact that this is part of our innate toolkit we are all built to be able to commune with the subtle anatomy and in fact we're doing it all of the time but we're doing it in a very random haphazard way and what I want for you and what I want for every woman that I train is to be intentional and to to have a, a really deep communion with ourselves as energy and to connect to that that one mind and the non-local consciousness um, that we truly are by learning how to make this normal and and know that it isn't a special magic gift of a few that's the opposite of the truth it is innate within each and every one of us it is our divine right to be able to speak in this language and to receive non-local Local information as much as we can you know expect in a healthy functioning body that we can read and we can write and all of those things that we take for granted we should take our intuition for granted in the same way and we should be able to care for ourselves through the energetic paradigm of what we are not just through the physical dense gross material plane so this I am sharing with you today to show you that it is innate within each and every one of you but it is also something that requires training and to become truly sophisticated in your ability to commune with the subtle anatomy requires ongoing professional development in this way um, and that is what I do for the women who come into the third level is give them the tools to get better and better and better so their access to the subtle anatomy is with laser-like precision it isn't vague it isn't wishy-washy what we understand is 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 with absolute certainty and clarity because it's coming from that non-local consciousness 
I train women as priestesses of non-local consciousness, which means that we learn how to commune with the one mind and all information is contained there. So of course we can know anything that we want, including the health of our chakra system. The other thing I just want to mention before I begin tuning into our volunteers is that the chakra system is often thought of as these discrete energy points, the seven main ones that run along the length of our spine. There's many, many more than that, but that's the ones that are usually taught in the world and that we think of them as being discrete and being of a fixed color and having a fixed meaning. And to some extent, those things are true, but they're also things that are evolving very quickly as we evolve uh, human consciousness. So rather than thinking of it like I have a chakra at the top of my head and one at my third eye and one at my throat, these are like a continuum of experience. They are not separate non-communicating aspects of us. They are, they are in flow with one another. And as we evolve our consciousness, even the colors and the meanings that we have previously known to be absolute truths for those chakras are evolving and changing. Angelique, one of my great teachers and one of the mentors in the Institute, explained to me that as we evolve our consciousness, the color range that we can see in the light spectrum increases so much that what we see at one chakra, which used to always be yellow or used to always be orange, um, is now beginning to take on other colors because we can see more with our inner sight. So not just with our external eyes. Some people can see externally, but I'm talking about with your inner eyes. And I think Angelique is here. And I was blown away to hear that because it, it makes sense, of course, that as we evolve our consciousness, that, that we have that veil lifted and we can see more of what is true and real. And right now we can only see a very uh, limited spectrum of that, um, you know, of the, of the colors that are available and we are changing that as we commit to walking this path and deepening our devotion, we get more and more access. So we may see the chakras appearing in ways that they aren't described or as, as they have described in textbooks. The other thing I want you to know about that is even though we know that the chakras have archetypal meaning, which means there's energy patterns that repeat, you may find information at the heart chakra that has to do with something that you would previously have associated with the crown or with the, the base chakra. And think again, not of these as discrete separate wheels of light but that these are a continuum of that light spectrum and they are one all returns to white light all big all of the colors come out of the white light and the white light is what we're actually working with so it's it's not I don't want you to become kind of fixed or um, you know stuck in ideas of what a chakra will say or do or be or feel. And that's the other thing, the great clue, I guess, about how the intuitive intelligence um, works in, in the training of the third level is that we learn how to have a unique conversation with the chakras. We're not relying on prior knowledge. We're not relying on textbook knowledge. We let that chakra communicate with us because it is a master energy and that chakra has a lot to say. So the chakras are, we learn how in the third level to communicate with the chakras as though you were speaking with a master. So imagining that, you know, Jesus is your heart chakra and Mother Mary is your throat chakra. You know, you're sitting down to, to commune with a great spiritual master energy, not, not this kind of fixed idea that it's, that it's some kind of color or light or it's a very abstract concept, but actually these are, these are absolutely living, breathing, communicating energies. And yes, there will be patterns that repeat in every human being um, in, if they're dealing with issues in a particular chakra, but those issues are going to present themselves in ways that are entirely unique for that individual. So we can't rely on prior knowledge or implicit knowledge. We must be in communion with that non-local intuition and let that chakra have a conversation with you. Let it be, um, you know, as living and breathing to you as, as if you were sitting down having a conversation with me because they are desperate to communicate with us. Our whole health, our well-being, our wealth, our abundance, our success, our happiness would change if we communed with our subtle anatomy and we paid privileged attention to our subtle anatomy. So I just want to finally say, I know I'm holding you all here in, in talking about the theory of this, but it really matters to me that you understand the way that I teach, which is very different to the way a lot of people teach the chakras and the way a lot of people teach intuition, um, is that we are also, you know, learning um, the potential possibility of being medical intuitives when we work in this way. And I've trained some women who've gone on to become truly incredible medical intuitives and their training has come from the third level. But medical intuition is not the aim of the game for me because I don't want you to focus on the physical realm above 
all else. And of course, that's not just the way it is in medical intuition. It's very invested in the um, emotional and spiritual health of the person as well. But it may be that you do find you naturally get information about the physical body as you tune into the chakras. Um, but in my work, I very rarely do because my work tends to speak to the soul level of the client's um, experience. And that's the level that the chakra will communicate with me. But I have trained, as I've mentioned, some amazing women who have really got a great deal of understanding um, of the physical anatomy and they naturally find that they are drawn to working as medical intuitives and the third level trains women to become medical intuitives if that is what they're drawn to and not everyone is but if you are drawn to it um, it's a wonderful skill to have but it isn't more or less important than all the other skills that we we have and and communing at the soul level to me is the highest possible good that we can do um, for our clients so let's do some checking in here. I'm just seeing if there's some other people who've added their names here. And I just want to make sure that I... Um, and Carrie's here. Goodness me, I'm impressed, my darling. I think it's about 2.30 in the morning for you, as you've shared with me. Um, and I love what you're saying, Brooke. I used to think it was only for the gifted ones and... You are living, breathing proof, my darling, that if you're the gifted one, you are the gifted one, that, that that is something that we can all train and you are amazing at what you do, but you've taken the time and effort to actually develop that skill and that's what's so exciting to me. Okay. All right. Let's just tune in. There's a few people volunteering, which I love. So what I'm going to do, because you've given me your permission and, and this is the also what we teach in the Institute is the ethics of this work is that it is only prior consent um, that I would ever go into and tune into the subtle anatomy of, um, of a person um, because otherwise it's literally not my business and it's not special or magical for you to tune into people without consent and then to dump that information on them. That's actually just invasive and it causes more harm than good. Um, and this information is specific to the person who receives it but of course these messages are archetypal and they're universal and you may find that within that you receive information that feels relevant and exciting for you and if you're here listening today there's a very good chance that everything you hear has relevance for you because that is the way the universe organizes itself and it's quite a miracle to me um, how that happens but it does happen and we can trust it all right I'm just going to take my watch off because I feel more connected to everything when I have my watch off okay I'm just going to invite you now, if you're safe to do so, to join me in tuning in to that larger, more magnificent part of ourself. And I do not do this work alone. All of you are gathering here together today and it is our alchemy that creates what we offer. We are one. And that is the greatest truth there is. No one has more of anything than anyone else. We are all the teacher. And we are all the student. We are all the healer and the healed. Deepening your breath with your eyes closed, noticing that you begin to feel that effortless sense of expansion simply by withdrawing your attention, even for a moment from the superficial world and going within to the world within the world. Just noticing that you begin to feel that vastness all around you. That infinite one mind, that web, the matrix of which we are all a part. It contains all time and space. All history and future. Everything that ever was and ever will be resides here in this ever present now. And as we connect into that web, that one mind of infinite consciousness, we have personal access to the annals of time, 
to the wisdom of the ages. We are not separate or finite. We are one. Taking a deep breath in now and letting it go and staying in that state if you like or if you'd like to blink open your eyes please do so. I'm going to begin with Carrie and Carrie immediately the um, third eye uh, is wanting to communicate today that beautiful master ray of the, the indigo light and that request for you now dear one is to privilege your inner life more than your external reality and to to fall at the knees of your own mystical self your own mystical truth and to know that all answers reside there there is nothing external that can answer what you're seeking right now and there's nobody outside of you who possesses what you need to know the access to that wisdom that ancient truth in the third eye to to the light libraries of time to the Akash to all of it is is your birthright and you've done this in many many lifetimes you've been the mystic and the alchemist healer in many lifetimes by being able to transport yourself through time um, to rearrange events and the energy of the third eye is, is very present you may have been experiencing symptoms of tension in in your forehead or even headaches or or tightness around the eyes or sore eyes because it's like you've been uh, resisting or holding back the unleashing of that mystical truth of your own nature perhaps a fear of perceived judgment or the idea of it being um I don't know, something that other people may be critical of, but it is your true nature and you've always brought great gravitas, great authority and great wisdom into the world because you can open this portal to the one mind with such ease and grace. Um, and now is the time to deepen into that. Even though your devotion is there and you're feeling and have felt for some time that connection, don't be afraid of going further with that because it's actually got everything that you want. Everything you're seeking is there um, and spending time just allowing yourself to feel safe to inhabit the path in this lifetime is what is being asked of you now, dear one. Okay, the next person on my list is Tero, and we are working with your base chakra and your sacral chakra, which often sit. Well, they sit right on top of each other. But as we said, we're working with a continuum of energy with the um, chakras. It's not like one chakra and then the next chakra and they never talk. They are very much in communication and we, we are evolving through our chakras. So, and that's not to say we are, we're linear. So if I'm at the crown, I'm way evolved. And if I'm at the base, I'm not evolved. We work through all of our issues through all of our chakras. So we evolve through them. They are, they're our teaching stations, if you like. Um, and we take our lessons through all of them. Um, the base and the sacral chakra here are just here with absolute applause for you, absolute desire for you to keep going in the direction you're moving in because you are breaking yourself free of some very ancient tribal, um, familial, um, and kind of, you know, loyalty patterns, which have meant destruction for you or destructive behavior in the people that you've seen around you. And you're breaking yourself free of that now. And there's just such a sense of, of richness and energy available to you in these places as you make your own community. Now you make your own family, you make your own tribe. And there's a lot of connection to where you've come from, but there's also new energy available to you to, to create something um, of a higher order and a higher level of, of awareness. And that, that creative energy that's bubbling up in you, don't take it too literally. It might mean that you're literally gonna create new life um, by having, having um, you know, a baby or something like that, adding to a family, to your family. But there's also take the creative energy that's there and see it as, as that metaphor for what you're creating in your own life and your offer, your service to the world. There's so much energy available to you right now. There's this abundant, like a, like a volcano bubbling up and it can feel a little bit overwhelming at times. But we just say, anchor into your devotion let your devotion anchor you descend into those chakras let your energy sit there and really allow yourself to anchor into mother gaia 
and know that that is your key to freedom but that energy is there to serve you and let it wash over you and move you because it will take you with it and let you create this, this new community this new tribe this new new offer um, as you as you create a, an original life for yourself free of some of the burdens of the past okay beautiful thank you my darling all right Shannon we're going straight to the heart chakra my darling you just have to start trusting God my darling you have to start trusting God and we say that with so much love because we see how much work you've done to get to the place where you are so much more free of, of all of your fears and doubts than you've ever been but this last kind of thing sitting in front of you is do you trust God are you willing to trust God now because that will require you to put down all of the history that you've come from everything that has happened and and that you have done and to forgive yourself and to forgive everything around you to inhabit the glory of, of heaven on earth right now that trust in God I trust God I want you to work with this as your mantra your prayer um, you know I love this statement so much I'm getting it tattooed on my body very soon um, don't tell my mom I think she's here live another tattoo um, so I I invite you to see this as your challenge your gift your blessing your opportunity to do to build your life around how am I not trusting God and how may I move further into trust of God and to just go towards that without any fear that's your mission that's your purpose just be in absolute congruence that when you feel yourself moving away from that am I going into doubt am I judging God am I judging myself am I feeling unworthy I want you to just keep coming back to that single person purpose my purpose is in this life is to learn to trust God and that is how I attain everything that I'm seeking This is where I would like to have a panel of my third level priestesses on here with me so you could all do the work and show everyone that this work is something that we are all capable of doing. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about me. I am simply someone who has spent a lot of time getting as good as I possibly can at this. And, you know, this is our commitment. We must make this commitment to, in an unregulated industry, to keep getting better. And the only way we can do that is investing in our professional development, continuing to seek greater and greater heights of our capacity and everything I'm doing you you are you know I've seen women I've trained women who have exceeded me in their skills and abilities and that makes me so freaking happy it's my greatest greatest joy is to see people do what I do better because you know I'm a teacher I want you to go out and excel and and do it better okay my darling we're going to tune in to Karen now and this is uh, Karen Buckland Okay, so we're at the base chakra here, my darling, and there's just this whooshing energy coming out of your base chakra. So all of this energy is being leaked out of the base chakra. It's like a rushing away. So all of your vital life source it can be built up through through your practices and through your devotion, but it leaks out, and not just in a little way, but like this rushing, leaking energy coming out in out of you, just meaning that you often feel like you're just being building yourself up, and then it leaks out again. So this is constant sense of being in deficit never being able to maintain that that sense of of peace and happiness and joy that comes from devotion and i want to share with you why that's happening because it's very clear um what I'm feeling and seeing here is this, we're going back to the idea of I don't trust God, but for you it shows up in the idea of I do not feel safe in the world. I do not feel safe to be here. And I'm not talking about your physical safety because you, you're a rational woman, you understand that, that's not where we're at here. It's that your soul is not sure that it's safe to be here, that it, it should not have left God, it should not have left the, that beautiful, blissful embrace of the infinite in order to come here. What was that all about? What a stupid decision. And I want to assure you that you absolutely are meant to be here and that your life is is a blessing to all of us. Um, but that sense of not feeling safe is where I want you to work. So you you know, I know a little about you and I know that you work with yoga asana as part of your devotion. Anything that's going to really allow you to strengthen in that base chakra working with your pelvic floor working with those intrinsic muscles as a way to enact the idea that I am safe to fully inhabit my body I'm fully safe to be present in the world I'm here as a blessing to the world and to really move into that sense of um, it isn't 
unsafe for me to be here. It's in fact absolutely appropriate and perfect that I am here because I am here in service. It's I am cannot be in danger. In danger, I am here in service. My soul cannot be harmed. I have never left God. That is just the illusion of the ego that's trying to tell me that I'm separate. Okay. I've got a few more names here, but they're a little bit familiar, AKA my priestesses. So I'm just going to see if there's some people here who I haven't worked with before, just so I can make you make sure that everybody gets a um, opportunity. Um, sorry. I'm a bit Okay. Jax. All right. All right, my darling, we're in your sacral chakra, which sits just below your belly button. And this is your sexual creative center in a, in a kind of traditional archetypal way of understanding this energy of the, of the sacral chakra. And the color here is incredibly vibrant, deep, deep burnt orange, a really beautiful, rich, intense color. But the shape and size is very small. So it's like you've contracted yourself, you've reduced your creative energy. That fear of rejection is so huge that it's better to hide what you truly are rather than risk someone disapproving or rejecting, um, disapproving of you or rejecting you. And you've felt that rejection many times in this lifetime very acutely. And so that, that history of feeling rejected by the world means that it's better to, to hide or suppress or conceal your incredible, unique, creative expression. And, and I don't mean creative in the sense of artistic. It may be artistic, but your life is a creative expression to make choices that bring you joy, to express who you are, to dress the way you want to dress, to eat the way you want to eat, to live where you want to live, to be free of anybody else's expectations and just be in complete creative authority of your life. There's been this fear of judgment um, because of the, the stories of rejection that you've experienced in multiple situations in your life. And we invite you now to put all of that down and to surrender your history to God and say, take this, it doesn't serve me anymore. I'm ready to be free. I'm ready to surrender to, a, to the greater purpose of my life, which is to be the full expression of whatever I am meant to be in this lifetime. And for you, my darling, that bright orange of that, that beautiful energy of that, that sacral chakra suggests to me that you have so much waiting to come out and to, to just take the brakes off and just to, to go towards whatever excites you without holding back, without believing that you need anybody else's approval or that you could possibly re be rejected because you can't, you can't be rejected when you're, when you're hundred percent loyal to yourself, there's, there's no one that can reject that. Oh no, I've run out of water. Hold on. I'm just going to have a sip of water. All right. Hmm. I should have filled that up before I. All right, that'll keep me going. All right. Okay, Kirsten Nella. All right, my darling. We are in your vast and glorious heart chakra, my darling, and it is vast. It's as big as an ocean. It's as big as the whole freaking world. This is an incredible heart chakra that I'm feeling right now. And also, it's completely surrounded by barbed wire. So we've got this incredible, massive, amazing heart that is just so capable of that deep, deep, unconditional love that is absolutely here with that sense of, of wanting to give and to be in service. And, and there's this fence going around it. Now, the fence is, of course, lived experience, history. It's unsafe. It's not fair. Things have happened to me that have harmed me and hurt me. And that's just a default position that has become a little bit like barbed wire over time, rusted into place and has become difficult for you to even notice is there. Interestingly, we're also dealing with this fear of rejection here, that it's easier to barb your heart and to potentially cause harm to yourself as a result of doing that than it is to, to be open to being vulnerable. Vulnerable, ugh, that's a word you don't like. Vulnerable, ugh, ugh. And yet you also see the power and the blessing of it, but it's the fear of, of well, this is very present, but vulnerability feels like death to you that I, if I am emotionally vulnerable, um, as has happened in this lifetime and many other lifetimes, that it will mean my death because in other lifetimes it's meant literal death. But in this lifetime, it's like all this history is sitting in front of your capacity to serve. That's all you want. You want to be here in a really big way to serve. You want to make things better for other people. You are here on a mission and there's a sense of frustration that things are not happening the way that you would desire them to because 
because when I feel into the heart, it's like there's two opposing forces. That's that opening, the vulnerability, the softness, the willingness, the, the grace, the, the, the power that comes from that grace. And on the other side, there's this fear and this contraction and this hiding and this holding back and this you stay out or I'm going to stab you with my stabby barbed wire because you're going to hurt me as I've been hurt before. And those two things can't coexist. It will be exhausting to live that way. Now, remembering this is all sitting deep in your subtle anatomy and your subconscious. So these things may be known or unknown to you, but I have a feeling you've got a really good clarity around this. You, you feel frustrated that you can't get to where you want to go in terms of your power to serve. And, and it's simply because there's these two opposing forces. So now I want you to spend some time in meditation, imagining that you're winding up that um, that barbed wire fence around your magnificent heart and then putting it down and letting God deal with that or angels or infinite consciousness, whatever word you want to use, and then applying a beautiful healing balm to the places where the barbed wire has cut that precious sacred heart of yours and, and seeing it healed as you sit with your heart as this precious instrument of, of God's grace in the world. And just let that healing happen and it will happen so quickly because you've done so much work to prepare yourself and you're primed for this so now it's simply time to say it is i risk being vulnerable i risk being vulnerable it is worth being open-hearted again um because that is my superpower okay all right my family just got home so if you hear noise in the background please forgive me all right i hope i'm keeping up with this where am i at i think i've got some energy for a little bit more teresa okay so immediately i was taken to the heart but then we move straight up into the throat chakra and that throat chakra energy is about the feeling incongruence with the idea of surrendering to God's will. Sorry, my family have just got home, so I'm just going to get them to shut the door and I'll keep going. Excuse me if my focus just went off a little bit. So what, we, what we're dealing here with is we'll often think about the throat chakra as about clear expression and am I speaking my truth and are my ideas being expressed clearly? But here we're very much about for you, my darling, am I ready to finally surrender to God's will? Am I ready to put down my own personal agenda and to, to go where God wants me to go, even if I don't know where that is or why that is? And that sense of stepping into the unknown, that willingness to step into God's grace and to let God lead is, is one of, Again, it feels like personal survival. It feels like safety. Can I do this without risking my own life? Because once again, we have the history of lifetimes where you have lost your life um, by the very act of of going along with God's grace or so it seems. So there's that history there that doesn't have anything to do with present time. But in terms of, of this lifetime, there have also been many times where it felt has felt like your own personal will or your capacity to choose for yourself has been thwarted by external circumstances. And that distrust there of why is this happening? Why is this God's will? Why is this meant to come to pass? But you're reaching a new level of surrender into God's will now, to God's embrace. And it's it's the time to let that jewel, that precious jewel that sits at your throat expand open and, and to let that light out and to shine. And I feel very excited about the ease of the tension that's often held here in the neck and the throat. There's often a lot of tension. I feel like that's going to ease more and more. And just allow yourself to become congruent even up into the jaw as well of when that tension's rising and to do things like I'm doing now I'm like I just need a neck massage but even down here down the side muscles here just to really ease things up and to keep things mobile and that will help this energy of shifting change that's going on keep moving through you it's beautiful energy that color is just divine all right let me see let me see mm -mm -mm. All right, Elise, I will finish with you, my darling, Elise Bateman. Okay. And here we are at the crown. And this is just actually quite a, a magnificent um, energy that I'm feeling here. You are you are ancient and wise, my darling. It's like I got the whole library of the whole freaking cosmos sitting right here. And it's just like you've lived everything and you've been everything and you're like wise counsel. Your energy feels like 
the wisest counsel. Like if, if I were a king or a queen and I had a big decision to make, it would be your counsel that I would want because this absolute sense of, of wisdom that radiates out from this crown chakra. Now, what I'm also feeling is that it feels a little bit like you've got an encyclopedia sitting on top of your head. And there's this sense that this is all here, but how do you access it or how do you share it or how do you gift it to the world? In the current paradigm of your life, you may not be seen as what you truly are. And that's simply because at this stage, you've not given yourself permission to see yourself as what you truly are, which is this ancient and wise um, oracle. And that's really the, the, the energy that I'm feeling here. This, you know, just this absolute, you have such depth in you. And it's, there is a disconnect. Now, here's the disconnect. Interestingly, when we have a lot of incredible um, energy at the crown and this kind of energy that I'm describing, we can also, as a self-protective measure, become a bit cynical as a self-protective, I said, said self-protective already. Obviously, we're reaching the end of the available energy for me. Um, the, the sense of cutting yourself off by being overly intellectual or too too cerebral or too much thinking, too much thinking, too much thinking, too much thinking, which actually then disconnects you um, from your capacity to feel that ancient wisdom that is your nature. It wouldn't surprise me if you were claircognizant, if that was your natural way of working with intuition, because there's this, a kind of self-protection that comes from being really um, intellectual and clever. It wouldn't surprise me as well if you're the person who always needs to get the last word in in an argument, not because, you know, this is not meant to be critical at all, but funny, please um, accept it with love, that it's it's very hard for you to feel vulnerable to this greater truth, this greater power of yourself. So as a way to kind of protect yourself, you go into your intellect rather than surrendering to your soul nature. But I want to assure you that your soul nature is deeply intellectual, deeply wise, deeply learned, deeply studied, like really, really deep love and appreciation and respect for learning and, and that you are you are born to share as the oracle and that platform, that desire to share um, can often feel like it's, it, where's my platform? Where's my vehicle? Where's my stage? Because you've got so much wisdom to offer. Um, and the more you let it guide you, the more your life will feel blissful. Okay. Oh golly, there's been a lot of comments and I haven't noticed them. I hope that is absolutely um, just feeling congruent for everybody. This work is divine and sacred and always in service to your greatest good. It cannot cause harm. It is always here as a blessing from your higher self. And it would only, the information would only make itself known to me with your consent at both your conscious mind level and your soul's level. Um, and it's, it, as I say, this is not special or magic. This is just what we were born to do. This is our true nature. Nature. And when we get on board with that, we'll find that our lives get truly magnificent. But it does require training. It does require a commitment to that development. It's not enough to just go and study something, to study a modality and then say, okay, well, that's it. I've got as good as I can get. My life is committed to getting better all of the time. I will never stop being the student to this work because our capacity to serve is increased by our ability and our abilities can always get better. And I would invite all of you to consider, you know, have you gone to the limits of your capacity? And I imagine there's probably more to come. And that excites me and I hope it excites to you too. I don't want to stop until I have fully realized myself as God. And of course, I cannot finish this without reminding you that the interviews for the third level open next Tuesday, I believe, or Wednesday, and are open for a short amount of time. And if you feel like you are ready to deeply immerse yourself in your intuitive skills and to become a laser-like intuitive guide who can cause miracles in the lives of the people you serve, if you want to increase your power to serve, bringing together all of the tools and modalities you've worked with up to now and get better and expand them and increase their power, then book your interview and let's hang out. Let's spend some time together and find out if this is the right program for you. All my love. It is my privilege to serve you.